You asked me, flight or invisibility, and I thought that was stupid, but now I look like this and I need your help. And if you feel like you need help in how do we analyze a data set, let's go through some of the steps. And not just for the final project in this class, but in general, what do you do? The first step is try to understand what the person is going after, and that's going to involve talking to the client, what do they want, what do they need, what data do they have. In this class, of course, you don't actually have a real client, but normally you would say, what variables do you think are going to have a strong effect, and is it going to be a positive, and might there be curvature? Those kind of things are great things to sit and talk about with the client. Then downloading the data and getting the data into the computer, followed by digging through that data for errors. And when you find something that's wrong, you go back to the client and you're like, hey, what's up with this? How did this happen? This class, of course, you don't have a real client, so there is some leeway as to how you want to handle those errors. But we make sure in this class the errors are obvious enough that you do need to fix them and correct them. I have plot the data here. Plotting the data sometimes helps you look for the errors. So there probably should be some sort of loop right here where you're plotting and looking for errors and in real life talking to the client, shooting them an email, hey, I found this weird thing, is that legit? Finally, we have make a model. And this is what people think statistics really is, is that it starts right here. The truth is, this kind of stuff often takes half your time in real life. So don't feel like time spent here is not doing statistics. This absolutely is a legit part of being a statistician. Then you make a model, and you look at the residuals. What are you looking for when you look at those residuals? You want to see if there's interactions or quadratics or some part that you missed. And if so, you can improve the model. When you do, what do you do? You go back to make the new model. And then you follow it down through the residuals. Can I improve it? And you'll loop on this. And usually a good chunk of time is spent here making sure that your model is as good as it can possibly be thanks to the residuals. When you finally have good residuals, then you do what's called model selection. That's where you're going through the p-values and saying, do I want to keep this variable in or toss them out? Get your model down to where it's only good residuals and good p-values, and at some point, finalize your model. People think this is where statistics ends, but oh no, I've got this whole other board here. Let me just mention, in this class, we're mostly using residuals. More advanced models might use confusion tables and AIC, BIC, and various other things that you can learn about. But the idea here is the same of making a model, how does it look, improve it until you finally get a good one and say, these are all the good models, and this is the one that I'm going to use in my report. And before you start your report, normally you would meet with the client and say, hey, look, here's some results, here's the model I've got. Does this seem to answer your question? Does it look like we're on track for what it was you wanted? And they'll say, yeah, this looks great. I'm really excited. Awesome. Give me another week and I will interpret the easy stuff. Those easy things are just going to require a sentence. But what happens if we're talking about interactions or polynomials? We're going to use a graph to help explain the hard stuff. And then explaining R squared and standard error and what did the residuals tell me, all the different pieces of the model and then you're ready to actually start the report. I realize in this class we don't have a client that you're checking in with. So if you have good residuals and good p-values, that's how we know that we've got a good model. And then you're going to have these pieces ready. When you do the report, if you're like me, you'll start with an introduction, go through how did you make the model and what did you see in the residuals that made you do that quadratic or interaction. And then go through the details, your R squared, your standard error, confidence intervals, effect of each of the variables. How does this affect the response? And answer the question, what are they after in the final project? You know, maximizing enemy deaths. How do we win the war? Here are what you would do. These variables high, those variables low, that sort of thing. And then you make a conclusion. And if you're like me, at the end, I'll go back through to my introduction and be like, oh, that was stupid. I need to redo that. For some reason, the first few paragraphs always end up getting deleted. And then I redo it later and like, oh, that's good. That's finally good. So there might be a little bit of a loop here. Notice this guy's in red and this guy's in red. This is what people think they're going to spend their time on. But all the black stuff does take some time. When you get to the effect of the variables, 
it's going to be a lot easier if you've already got the graphs and you've done a little explanation as you look through those variables. Then all you got to do is just stick them in the report. And this doesn't have to take a huge amount of time. It, of course, depends on how much you like writing reports. And when you're done, you would meet with a client and do a presentation and be like, here's what I found. And no, that's not a required part of the class, although we do talk about it all the time. Should we make the students do a presentation with PowerPoint and show us what they got? And in real life, yeah, you would sit there and show them all the things and celebrate the cake is a lie, so don't fall for that. But here are the steps that you need to do any sort of general analysis with some things that might take more or less time, depending on how long you lose.